When it comes to working with 8-bit footage, you will find plenty of advice on the internet on how to deal with the banding in your footage. In my opinion though, this is like pooping in your living room and then getting a super advanced vacuum robot that cleans up after you. In this video, I will show you a few tips how you can avoid banding in your footage, but I will also show you a few tips on how to not create that banding in the first place. Because relying on your super advanced vacuum robot to clean up after you is a good idea, but wouldn't it be a much better idea to not poop in your living room in the first place? First and foremost, what is 8-bit footage and why is it so inferior to, let's say, 10-bit footage? It's only a difference of two bits. How big of a deal could that be? To save you some time, the short answer is it's a huge difference. The long answer is a little bit more complex, but I think in order to make educated decisions, we all should know what we're talking about. To understand this abstract concept of bit depth, let's start with something more familiar, namely resolution. We all know that higher resolution means more pixels, which lets us capture and display an image more precisely. Granted, this example is a little bit extreme, but still, an image with a lower resolution carries less information. The same thing is true for bit depth. Only this time, resolution doesn't mean more pixels, but more individual steps between black and white. Let's imagine we want to capture this black and white gradient in the real world, but let's pretend our camera has just a few bits available. Let's start with one bit. One bit can represent two values, zero and one, which means black and white. So if we want to capture this real world black and white gradient with a one bit bit depth, our image would look like this. With two bits, we already get four shades of gray. And with three bits, we already get eight shades of gray. As you can see, the number of shades we can resolve increases exponentially with the bits we have available. This is because the amount of available bits is noted as the exponent in the equation. We start with the number two because one bit can have two states, a zero or one, and the exponent represents the number of bits we have available. So if we calculate this, two to the power of one makes two shades of gray. And indeed, we just saw that in our image before. The black and white gradient from the real world became just a black blob and a white blob. If we have a bit depth of two bits, it's two to the power of two, which is four. This means we have four shades of gray available. A three bit bit depth is two to the power of three, which results in eight available shades of gray. Now let's skip a few bits in between and move on to 8-bit bit depth. 2 to the power of 8 results in 256 shades of gray. And if we go to 10-bit footage, this means 2 to the power of 10. And this is already 1024 shades of gray. As you can see, the difference these two additional bits make is already massive. Coming back to the beginning, you can think of bit depth as the resolution of how many steps between black and white we can resolve. Having more steps means being able to capture and display more information, just like having more pixels. But we don't only capture the tones between black and white, we capture all colors. So we have these bits available for all the three primary colors, red, green, and blue. This means to calculate all the available colors, we need to multiply the bits for red, the bits for green, and the bits for blue. We need to multiply them because every pixel has a red, a green, and a blue value. And the combination of any of these values make the color of the pixel. Now let's actually calculate this. For 8-bit footage, we need to multiply 256 with 256 and with 256 again. This results in about 16.8 million colors. This sounds like a lot, but let's have a look at 10-bit footage. For 10-bit footage, we need to multiply 1024 with 1024 and 1024. This gives us 1.07 billion colors. In actual numbers, it looks like this. When we initially looked at the black and white values, 8-bit versus 10-bit footage was already a huge difference. But having a look at all of these colors, the difference becomes much, much bigger. 10-bit footage has 64 times more colors than 8-bit footage. Now, let's really try to understand this. Let's pretend we have a camera that shoots at a bit depth of three bits and we want to capture this gradient from the real world. Maybe such a gradient appears in the sky or in the water. 
Our camera sees all of these colors, but it only has a bit depth of 3 bits available. This means the resulting colors in our video file look something like this. Even though the gradient was smooth in the real world, we now have these color chunks because we literally don't have any more information available. And the same is true for resolution. So the plane in the real world looks more like this and not really like this. And this, ladies and gentlemen, and everyone in between and outside, is banding in a nutshell. But the story is not over yet. You have probably heard countless times that 8-bit footage is just too weak to handle any kind of log recording. This is actually true and here's why. Let's say our camera records video files with a bit depth of 8-bit. This means your video file has 256 shades of red, 256 shades of green and 256 shades of blue available. To make this a little bit more simple, let's stick with black and white again. Because remember, when something is a shade of grey, the red, the green and the blue value is exactly the same. Therefore, we can also say we have 256 shades of grey available. When you shoot in log, your brightness information is encoded logarithmically. I don't want to go too deep since this video is already a little bit technical. So let's just say your video signal gets squished. Because you all know log footage looks very flat and very desaturated compared to Rec. 709. Now if this is what our file can carry, if we squish the video signal, we are only using a portion of the available shades of grey. Everything else goes just unused. So from our already limited bit depth of 8-bit footage, we are throwing a good chunk out of the window because we don't even use it when shooting log. When color grading, we want to transform our log footage back to Rec. 709, which stretches the footage between the black and the white point again. Let's think back to our resolution analogy. Stretching our footage is a bit like zooming into an image. We need to zoom into the shades of grey of our footage because we only use a part of it when we're shooting log. When you zoom into an image with low resolution, you will get a very pixelated result. But if your original file has enough resolution, zooming in doesn't really matter because you have enough pixels to work with. So when shooting log, we are only using a little bit of what our file can carry. And when transforming our footage back to Rec. 709, we just don't have enough shades of grey available. This results in harsh steps between the colors, which we call banding. However, I want to make this very clear, shooting log is not bad. If you're working with 10-bit footage, you have pretty much all of the information available you could ever need. Therefore, 10-bit footage is a minimum requirement for super flat log profiles like S-Log3, for example. To make this a little bit more clear, let's come back to our resolution analogy one last time. Let's say 8-bit footage is a little bit like a 10 megapixel image. You can zoom in a little bit, but if you want to go further, you are out of luck. We know that 10-bit footage has 64 times more colors available. So in that comparison, 10-bit footage would be something like a 640 megapixel image. As you can see, when we translate this concept to something more familiar like resolution, we can grasp the difference more easily. And therefore, shooting log isn't bad as long as you have the bits to support it. Now that you're more familiar with the underlying concepts which cause issues with 8-bit footage to begin with, here are some things you can do in camera to avoid banding. Number one, don't shoot with super flat log gammas. For example, instead of shooting as log 3, go for as log 2. It's a good idea to look up the different log profiles of your camera manufacturer and go for the least flat one. Alternatively, don't shoot log at all. If you don't really need or want to shoot log, but you still want the flexibility in post, just lower contrast and saturation in your camera. This will still give you a more flexible image compared to shooting straight Rec. 709. Another solution would be if your camera offers it, give HLG a try and convert it to Rec. 709 in post. HLG grades wonderfully when converted to Rec. 9 in post, even with 8-bit cameras. When it comes to grading your images, there are some super easy tips that will prevent your footage from breaking. Speaking of color grading though, if you are struggling to achieve the images you want to create or you have any frustrations with your color grading process, just know that there is no one-size-fits-all approach to color grading. Even though I do my best to provide practical tips in my YouTube videos, every creator has different footage, different creative preferences and different goals. If you want to get the answers that apply to your specific workflow, you can book a one-on-one -on -one session with me. I'm always happy to help. The link is in the video description. 
Now back to avoiding banding during color grading. My number one tip is because I see it all the time, stay away from color masks and qualifiers at all costs. Trust me, it's not worth your time and 8-bit footage doesn't even offer enough color resolution to do this properly. If you want to use masks, go for power windows or shade masks instead. Secondly, a quality LUT goes a long way. If you decide to still shoot in some kind of log, make sure you use a high quality LUT or the built-in color space transformation in DaVinci Resolve. This reduces any unnecessary strain on your footage. I have developed a free suite of color space transformation LUTs that work pretty well, even on 8-bit footage. The link to them is also in the video description. Number three, when grading, be mindful of your actions and revise prior adjustments rather than throwing more adjustments at it. This means always challenge yourself to get to your desired result with the adjustments you already applied. Last but not least, and this may sound crazy, but use a film emulation plugin. I know, I know, I know, hear me out. If you want to achieve a film look anyway, do it properly and use a film emulation plugin. The reason why this works is because these plugins split your image and then recombine it again in order to apply a proper film grain emulation. To be clear, this doesn't create color information out of thin air, but this helps to disguise the banding. And if you finally want to ditch the beginner look in your color grades, you should watch this video next.